Good morning and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View. This morning where you get your morning Celtic news on a daily basis, 365 days of the year mostly and uh, sometimes even at night. And then we will get back to doing lives once the football starts next week. Yes, Celtic are back next week. A week tomorrow, Celtic entertain Bucky Thistle at Celtic Park. We'll all be buzzing to get back to the football, get back to watching the football and uh, seeing Celtic back on the screens. Celtic did go back into training yesterday and um, they'll all get, get just getting their fitness checked and everything. Uh, the week after that, Celtic entertain Ross County in the league as we get back into league action. And then the week after that, as we head into February, we're then away to Aberdeen. We Aberdeen, so that'll be an interesting game also. Um, be, that's an important game considering the players that we are missing. Now, before you go any further, if you are looking to go on to Amazon today, click onto the first link that is in the description of this video. And uh, just check out everything on the Celtic page and then go shopping on Amazon and buy whatever you want, really. Uh, but just click on Amazon through the link and uh, it'll do absolutely fine for us. Anyway, Chris Sutton has been talking about the signing that Celtic are about to make. He says, uh, and he's been talking about the, the transfer activity from Brendan Rodgers and Mark Lawwell in his column in the paper. He did go on to say, he said, look, when you look at the, the previous manager, he said, there's no use trying to... Uh, kid ourselves on here. He says, you, you look where Ange Poster Coglu was looking. Um, obviously, it's, it's, he came, he saw, and now he's Quan. Did I just say that? I've seen it on Twitter, sorry. Anyway, yes, uh, there is a player that came in in the summer, and it was suggested that the players that came in in the summer, summer the majority of them, were not Brendan Rodgers' signings. All he did was sign them off. And um, they were obviously brought in by the previous manager, which uh, one getting shown the door yesterday, put out on loan to St Mirren, says all that you really need to know um, about this, the situation in the summer. There was a lot of players that came in that obviously Brendan Rodgers agreed with to bring in, and um, but they weren't really his players. Is it the fact that Nico Kuhn is one of his players and the type of players that he wants to get in? He, Brendan Rodgers has uh, put in everything on the line here, says Chris Sutton, because he thinks that it could Nicholas could be a project player, could be a project player. And we spoke about it on the video yesterday. It's the fact that he is 24, um, he was bought for half a million. At that age, you're, you're expecting a player to go for a little bit more than, than half a million. We are buying them for the best part of for, it's near enough three million. So, uh, but the one and only Chris Sutton said, will he be a Dyson Maida or a Marvin Shavid? Anyway. Only time will tell. We hope that he comes in and he does the best for Celtic. When you look at one player that's made an immediate impact is a player that came into Celtic and he's been a winger and he's been absolutely fantastic for Celtic this year. You look at Louis Palmer. You want players to come in and you want players to have that same effect as Louis Palmer. Uh, when you look at his form he, and the goals that he's scored uh, since he's came into the team, you know, I think he's, he's been an absolute revelation. He says, when you look at it, He's, you could have had Turnbull in there. Nah, nope. Um, you've got Matt O'Reilly in the squad. He's a fantastic player that's only getting better. But the 23-year-old that's came in from South America, even though he was playing in, in Greece, um, when you look at his stats, they're absolutely phenomenal. And you want players to come in and have the similar effect as what Palmer's having, that positive impact on the pitch. Uh, Lewis Palmer, he's had nine assists uh, this season alone, and he's had five goals. That's not bad for a player that uh, has taken, a, I mean, some of these players come in and take a little bit of time to get used to Scottish football and definitely get used to Scottish weather. Uh, that's, that has to be said, especially for the South Americans. Maybe that's why Alexander Burnaby hasn't sort of featured as much. It was good to see that the two of them were speaking in Spanish to each other on Instagram and um, they've got a little bit of a relationship there. But it's unfortunate that Burnaby is not really shown the same way at Celtic that Lewis Palmer has. Anyway, we move on from that and let's just hope that Nicholas Kuhn, when he comes in, Nico, when you look at it, we had Andy Tom that came in and he wasn't a big, big name at the time, but he came in and done absolutely fantastic for Celtic. So let's just hope that Nico can come in and be just as good as Andy Tom was back in the day. And a lot of younger audience are probably going, who the heck was Andy Tom? Go and check him out. He was a fantastic player for Celtic back in the day. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, we move on from that. Speculation, there's some... 
speculation going around this morning that Celtic are expected to make a move for the Bronby striker. Yes, I know, I just said it. Um, the fact that we've just got Quan out the door, will there be others to follow? But there is speculation this morning that Celtic have went back to Bronby and opened talks, even though it was only last week that the Bronby hierarchy, now maybe they had a little bit of warning that this was sort of coming and um, obviously Celtic had been making noises about coming back from Bronby did come out last week and say, look, we are in no rush to sell any of our players. The fact that Celtic are allegedly going back in for Matthias Kidsford Garden. Now, the one thing that you have to think about with this one, right, you're going to have to bring in a, a striker that is going to dislodge Kyogo. Right, bringing in another striker that's going to sit on the bench, bringing in a quality striker, um, or you know someone that's goal scoring, someone that's in the first team, bringing them in and then getting them sitting on the bench when Kyogo is playing, is going to be a difficult one. So Celtic really are going to be walking a tightrope with this one, unless Brendan Rodgers is about to change the formation of Celtic. I've always said that in the league, especially, we should be playing three five two all day long, especially when you when you look at the way that other teams play against us. You know this sitting back five in the box and then sitting really low back and trying to stop us playing there is no need for celtic to be playing uh, a four in at the back and even though the, the the wing backs come up and try and get forward and the likes of greg taylor and that but i think that celtic do and for me liam scales cameron carter vickers and one other at the back would do absolutely fine and then who do you play at the back? Um, that's the, that's the, the then question that is open to a lot of fans. Anyway, what do you think about that? Is Celtic going to go for the Bronby striker? Remember, we were about three or 400,000 short. And at the summer, they have come out just last week and said that, look, we're in no need to sign them. Uh, Tiago, uh, there is an update coming out of Portugal, but Tiago, that Celtic are still sniffing about him. Um, but there's no use talking about it. If he comes in, Will he replace Greg Taylor straight away? Um, uh, that's to be said. Alexandro Bernabe, he came in. Uh, 3.75 million we paid for Alexandro Bernabe. That's one player that, look, if he's not going to get the game time at Celtic, we really need to make a decision. It's going to be interesting to see if that's the type of player that Brendan Rodgers does shift out. Uh, but, I mean, what lengthy contract is he on? Um, Thiago, if he comes in, he's 22, he's a left back. He's came through the youth ranks at Benfica also and he's currently playing for his team but at four million are Celtic really going to spend another four million on a player that um, ultimately he has to be better than Greg Taylor and Greg Taylor always seems to up his game he hasn't been in the best of form this season but when Burnaby came in Greg Taylor upped his game the second half of the season Greg Taylor's had that in him in the past couple of seasons he always just ups his game after Christmas and then all the players do I mean Scott Brown said it the other day Celtic over the there's as many years when they went away on their winter break and yes we have not had uh, the, the the team did not go away as a team uh, they all went away individually which I thought was a bit strange this year but um, Brendan Rodgers deciding to give the team individual time off to go and do as they please for a week rather than um, previous times where they've all kind of went on holiday um, together as a team, which is interesting. But Brendan Rodgers does say that this time round, there's a different feel to the squad and a different feel to the team. But the first time round, you had the togetherness of the squad because everyone was aiming for that nine in a row run. You know, everyone was focused on that in the background and that's why there was the together togetherness in the team there. Maybe there isn't that togetherness that they had back then. Maybe that's a question that uh, Callum McGregor could answer. Anyway, I've been waffling on this morning. The Celtic news this morning is that Celtic are about to make an announcement with their first signing. The Celtic women team have a new manager. All the best to her. She is Swedish, I believe. Um, I don't really watch too much of the women's football, so I can't really comment on it. Chris Sutton is saying that the Celtic are walking a bit of a tightrope when it comes to bringing in another striker because are they going to give Kyogo more time off. I mean, Kyogo's still got this shoulder injury. It's something that Brendan Rodgers says, look, he's, he's okay with it. His shoulder pops out now again. It's something that he'll need operated on in a couple of years' time before he retires. Um, but you've got to remember that Kyogo is 28. But if we're going to bring a striker in, is it going to be a player that's going to sit on the bench and do nothing for the majority of games? And will someone that's playing first-team football be prepared to come into Celtic and, and play second fiddle to the one and only Kyogo. And then at, at this time of the year, it's also a bit awkward because if you're going for players, if you're going for players that aren't playing, 
um, you've got to ask why are you, why are they not playing and why are they not good enough for the team that they're with just now? Is it the fact that they've spat the dummy and had a bit of a fallout with the, the management or if they're just not good enough for the team? And then players that are playing in their first team, you're going to have to go out and pay top dollar for them. And, and is our Celtic so prepared to do that? Maybe under Brendan Rodgers, things are about to change when it comes to transfer activity. All will become clear in the next week or so. And on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans all around. Let roll up to the party, roll up, roll up to the party, roll up to the